The first step in phaco emulsification is the creation of a lamellar corneal tunnel with a bevel up tunnel blade. Capsular excess is performed using a 26 number needle bent about 30 degrees against the bevel. This is directly pushed into the anterior chamber and the entire rexis is performed under aqueous which gives a very stable anterior chamber as the entry wound is sealed by the needle bore. The needle first makes a radial incision which is pushed down at its peripheral extent to create a flap. The needle tip then holds and guides the flap in a circular fashion to complete the rexis. A 2.8 mm keratome creates an entry into the anterior chamber about 30 to 40 degrees to the right of the midline and the same keratome makes a side port entry on the left of midline but this time the keratome enters only halfway of its total width creating about 2 mm entry. Hydrodissection is performed by a 25 gauge cannula which is inserted into the anterior chamber, maneuvered under the anterior capsule and used to direct a wave of fluid which frees the nucleus from the posterior capsule and prolapses it into the anterior chamber. A dispersive viscoelastic is then injected into the anterior chamber to position the nucleus and protect the endothelium. There are many techniques for breaking up the nucleus for phacoemulsification. Here the left pole of the nucleus is maneuvered by suction into the anterior chamber, a dialer inserted under it and a somewhat manual method used to chop the nucleus while low phaco power is applied. The dialer claws away at the nucleus and bits are broken off to be emulsified with relatively low power. Irrigation aspiration is here performed using a double barreled Simcoe cannula. The suction being manual allows very good control of the aspiration. The method of the aspiration is to get a grip on the anterior cortex using low suction to get it into the center and then increase suction to aspirate it or strip it away from the posterior capsule and remove it from the eye. Both pots can be used to get at the cortex in different parts of the lens. A temporary anterior chamber maintainer made from a 20 gauge needle is held in the left hand and used to infuse fluid into the anterior chamber 
while the IOL is injected into the anterior chamber with the right hand. No viscoelastic is used and even the injector is primed with BSS, in this case with some oxyfloxacin added. Once the IOL has been unfolded and dropped into the anterior chamber with its inferior loop in the capsular bag, the superior loop is then flexed into the capsular bag using a dialer. The surgery is now effectively over.